Hi, welcome back for part two of basic Excel. Now that you're familiar with the Excel screen, uh, we're going to take a look at um, a few a few small things that that I would guess a lot of folks don't know about. Um, the first thing we're going to look at, I, I said I wasn't going to go over all the tabs and all the buttons on the ribbon. But uh, there are a few things about the ribbon that I think you should know. Some of it might help you out, some of it might not. Uh, that's up to you to decide. But what we want to look at um, on some of the groups, right? The, the groups are delineated by these vertical separators, right? So this is the clipboard group, this is the font group, this is the alignment group, so on and so forth. Some of these groups have in their group area on the bottom right hand corner um, these little little boxes with downward pointing arrows in them. These aren't just decoration, which a lot of people think they are. Uh, they're not used to resize the group or anything like that. These are what are known as dialogue launchers. And what they do is they open up more um, more more choices, I guess would be a good a good thing. Uh, more properties for that particular group. And we're going to start with one that um, is not known well at all. Most people know that if you, you select something and, and you copy it, whether you do a, a, a right click and copy, um, or if you come up here and you click the copy button, or if you do control C and copy, all three of, the, three of those do the exact same thing. Um, and then if you go and you choose something else and you copy that, whatever you copied the first time is now gone from the clipboard. Um, and when I paste, it's only going to paste the last thing I copied. If you click this dialog launcher for the clipboard group, it actually opens your clipboard. So you can see the last thing I copied is there, the 2500. If I come back over here and copy this 2575 now, it adds it to the clipboard. It doesn't replace what's on the clipboard. So if I come down here and I copy the 300, and I come down here and copy the 220, you'll see that all of those get added to the clipboard. So if I want to reuse those numbers, if I come over here just in some empty cell, and I want to add this 2575, I click the drop down and select paste, and there it is. If I select a, a different cell, and I want to add the 220, I click the drop down and select paste, and there it adds that. So that's one of the benefits of opening your clipboard as opposed to just using the clipboard. If I close the clipboard and reopen it, everything is still there. Um, so it's, it's real handy if you have something that you're going to copy um, or if you have multiple things that you want to copy and then paste again at a later time. Uh, do understand though that once you exit Excel, um, the clipboard will be cleared. So now we're going to move on to um, the font dialog launcher. If you click the font dialog launcher, it opens the format cells dialog box and highlights or opens the font tab. So you have additional properties now here for the font that you can uh, make changes to. So I'll close that, and if I click the Alignment Dialog Launcher, you'll see that again it opens the Format Cells dialog box to the Alignment tab. Um, the Font tab is still here, it just opens to the Alignment tab because that's the one I selected. And it gives you some additional options or properties when it comes to um, cell alignment. If I come over and click on the Number dialog launcher, you'll see that it also opens the Format Cells dialog box to the Numbers tab. The Alignment tab and the Font tab are still there, but this time it opens to the Number tab and gives you some additional properties for working with numbers. Now all of that can be accomplished by right-clicking anywhere on the worksheet um, and selecting Format Cells. 
it brings up the exact same dialog box format cells. There's the number tab, there's the alignment tab, there's the font tab. There's also three additional tabs in here that don't open with dialog launchers, and that's our borders option. Uh, it gives you more options to apply borders than just the border button up here on the ribbon. We have the fill option where you can select a fill color um, for the selected cell or selected cells. Um, and then we also have the protection option, which we're not going to get into protection. That's a bit beyond um, the basic course that we're in right now. Um, plus, it's a little bit wonky. Um, it's it's kind of kind of backwards thinking a bit. Um, but yeah, the fill and the border, uh, you know, it's it's all here. One of one, you know, one of the benefits here with the border um, is you can select a color. For your border, um, there we go. You can select a border style. You know, maybe I want this uh, dash dot dash border, and then you can apply it to whichever borders you want. Um, if you want it on all four borders, and you make all four borders, click OK, and there is my colored cell with the colored. Border. If you want to make changes to that again, format cell. Maybe I just want the left and right borders. Um, so you deselect the top and bottom borders, and there you have just the left and right borders. So it's it's just a different way to do uh, kind of the same thing. Because if you come up here and you click on um, top border, and you see it applies a top border, just a plain border though, nothing fancy. You can't do fancy borders. Um, from this just this drop down, uh, you would have to go to more borders, which is that brings up the, the format cells borders tab that we were just in, um, and it shows nothing. So you'd have to pretty much start over again. Okay, so that's that's the dialog launchers. Let me let me clear my formatting on this cell. Clear formats. Turn it back to just straight straight numbers and a plain cell with borders. Uh, so that's dialog launchers. Um, you won't see them everywhere. Uh, for example, on the insert tab, you don't see it until you get here to the charts group. Matter of fact, that's the only one on the insert tab. Um, page layout, there's a couple on there. Formulas, um, none on the formulas tab, so on and so forth. So you just kind of look and see if there's a, if there's a format or a, a dialog launcher, go ahead and click it uh, and, and see what additional settings or properties are available for that particular group. Okay. All right. So now let's get let's get a little bit crazy. Um, there are some people who work um, in Excel and in Word and in PowerPoint um, or Publisher. Uh, and and they're 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 keyboard driven, right? They're 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 good typers. They know where all the keys are, and they it just bugs them to have to take their hands off of the keyboard over the mouse to come up here and select something so that they can make a change, right? Maybe wanna they want to change my zoom to to seventy five. Want to make things a little bit smaller so I can see more of the worksheet. Um, you know that's. That that takes time to move over, to grab the mouse and move the mouse and click the mouse and all that stuff. You can do everything I just did without ever touching the mouse. And the key to this is the Alt key on your keyboard. When you press the Alt key, you'll see that Excel, actually Microsoft Office, assigns a number to each quick access toolbar button up here at the top. You see that each one has a number. Uh, the only one that doesn't not available is redo because well we didn't really undo anything. If you didn't undo, then you can't redo. But everything else has a number. All right, everything else has a number. Um, so if you if you pressed that number, let me let me make my active cell down here, and I'll press the Alt tab again, and we can see that uh, the number six is assigned to sort ascending. In other words, smallest to largest. So if I press number six on my keyboard, you'll see that Excel sorts 
that group of numbers. It reached out and included all of the numbers in that group, and it sorted by column C, smallest to largest. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And I never touched the mouse. So now I'll press the Alt key again. Let's say I want to change my zoom uh, back to 100 or 120 or something like that. Um, the zoom is on the view tab, so I press W. Even though the view tab is currently visible, you still have to press W because now what it does is it assigns a shortcut key to every button on that ribbon tab. So if I want to change my zoom, I press Q, and then I can use my up and down arrow keys to, to get to wherever it is I want to go. 125% zoom, press enter, and they're all done without ever touching the key or the without ever touching the mouse. So, I mean, just, just have a look. You can go anywhere. If you want to go to page layout and you press Alt P, um, you know, if you want to change the orientation or change your margins, you can do that. Some of these have um, multiple keystrokes. So in other words, if I wanted to change my grid lines, uh, if I want to change and not see the grid lines on my worksheet, I can press uh, VG. And there you'll see that the grid lines disappear. And if I want to bring them back, I press Alt P for um, the page layout tab and then VG again, and it turns that checkbox back on. So there's lots and lots of things you can do with the keyboard without ever touching the mouse. So if you're one of those folks who likes to, to stay on the keyboard because you know everything is, then it shouldn't take you long to get used to um, some of these different keyboard shortcuts. All right. So that's, that's the Alt key uh, and how it interacts with the ribbon. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because, well, some folks like it, some folks don't. Um, but let's move on. Um, um, I'm going to close my, my clipboard because I don't really need it right now. And I want to show you a handy tool uh, that Excel has built into it that allows you to view um, different sections of a worksheet all at the same time. Suppose I had information, uh, let me take this, this group of information here, and I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna come down here um, to row, I don't know, we'll go to row 200. That sounds pretty, pretty good, pretty far down. And I'll just paste this information. Um, and now let's say I wanted to view the information that's down here on row 200 and the information on rows 3, 4, and 5 at the same time. Uh, I could try zooming out to see if I could see it, and sure enough, there's, <laughs> there's rows 3, 4, and 5, and there's rows, you know, 200, 201 and 203, but can you read any of that? No. Um, you know, granted, you can zoom out, and, and zooming out does serve its purposes, which I won't get into right now, but it does serve its purposes. So what you can do to, to see different um, areas of the worksheet all at the same time, get rid of these, I don't need those anymore, is you can go to the View tab, and on the View tab, we have a button called Split. Now, what the Split button does is it's going to take wherever your active cell is, and it's going to put a, a horizontal dividing line above your active cell, and it's got to put a vertical dividing line to the left of your active cell. So if F13 is my active cell and I click that Split button, it's going to put a vertical bar here, and a horizontal bar here. So I have actually four separate windows that I can look at. All right, so let me show you that. Click split, and there's my split. Window one, window two, window three, window four. Separate scroll bars. Here's the scroll bar for, for these two, right? If I go left or right, scroll left and right. Here's the scroll bar for this one. If I scroll to the left, now I can see a, B, and C, and A, B, and C. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, right? 
Um, and then here is a scroll bar for these two cells. So I can scroll up and I can see four versions of the exact same thing if I need to. I don't know why I would, but you can. Um, and then this one also has a scroll bar, or these two has a, have a scroll bar. So you can manipulate each one of these more or less individually. So let's say I wanted to see down here, I wanted to see rows three, four, and five, and row 200, 01, and 02. I can just scroll down until I get to row 200, and you'll notice over here on the right side, it's showing what row I'm scrolling down to. So there's 150, 170, 180, 190. There we go. 200, 201, 202, 203. And looking at rows 1, 2, and 3, and 4. So you can do that. And if you have information over, you know, in column Z, you can take this side and scroll over and look at information in column Z, all while looking at the information in column A at the same time. So very handy, um, easily manipulated. Let's say you wanted more space here in this upper left um, area and less space over here in the upper right. You can put your mouse pointer right dead center where these two uh, borders cross and you can click and drag and move that wherever you want it. Maybe you just want the horizontal to be um, farther up, and you click and drag the horizontal. Maybe you want the vertical to be farther left, you click and drag the vertical. So each one can be moved independently, or you can move them both at the same time. Completely up to you. Maybe you decide you don't really need this horizontal or the vertical split anymore. So you put your mouse pointer on it to get rid of it, you simply double click and it goes away. So now you just have the uh, horizontal split allowing you to see two different sections, um, hundreds of rows apart if that's what you need. When you're done with that, you can either double click that to get rid of it, this horizontal, or you can click the split button to turn them on and off. Now, if you just want to start out with a vertical, um, a vertical dividing line. Then make your active cell somewhere in row one. Because remember, the split window splits above and to the left. So if I'm in row one, there's nothing to split above. It's only going to put that border, the dividing border, to the left. So with my active cell in F1, I click split. Now I just get one split window. All right. If I want it to just split horizontally, then I place my active cell in column A somewhere. Because again, it's going to separate above and to the left. And if I'm in column A, there's nothing to the left to split. So if I click the split button now, then I get my horizontal split. See how easy that is? So if you ever need to look at two different areas or three different areas or four different areas of your worksheet, then you can use the split window um, to make those changes and do whatever it is you need to do. All right, so I'm following along in, in the study guide, and the study guide is available out on the web page. Uh, if you haven't already downloaded it, feel free to download it. It's going to be called Basic Excel. Uh, it'll be a PDF file, so you should have no problems opening it and reading it. Um, uh, the next section in the book goes over the quick access toolbar. I think I covered that pretty well in section one, so I'm not going to repeat myself. I've already covered the formula bar with, um, you know, the, the, the toolbar here. The only thing I didn't cover is the function wizard uh, or the fun insert function button. And we'll get into that probably more in the intermediate class because it gets more into formulas and functions. But if you do need a quick function, this is one good way to do it. You click the insert function, uh, insert function button. It opens the insert function dialog box. You find the function you want, um, click OK, and then just fill in the values. Um, so value one, maybe I, I want this one. 
and then value two, I'll put this one, and value three, I'll put this one, click OK, and you'll see that it's giving me my, my result here is three because the, the count will count the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. It tells you right here um, what that function does. So from cell three, four, C3 to C5, there are three number values in that range. Click OK, and there's the result. So that's the insert function. Again, more on that in, uh, in uh, the intermediate course. I don't want to waste a bunch of time here. I do, however, want to show you the other thing that the name box does. Remember, we, we looked at that in, a, in the, the first lesson, the first, section one, and I said that it indicates where your active cell is. We can also use it to move our active cell, right? We can move our active cell. I come back here and I go A1, enter, it takes me back to A1. The third thing that this name box does is if you have a cell, let's say I want to select a group of cells, right? This group of cells right here. Um, to, to select, make sure your, your mouse pointer is inside the cell, not on the edge, because if it's on the edge, you're going to move that cell content. We don't want to move the cell content. We want to select. So make sure your mouse pointer is inside. It's the big fat plus sign. And then you click and drag to select the cells that you want. And let's say I want to name this group of cells just, just for future reference, right? Maybe I'll, I need to use this group of cells in a formula or a function or something of that nature. Um, or maybe I just do this, this group of cells, right? I'll do these three. Um, and I'll call this... Um, first quarter, because we're going to create a budget. F I R, <laughs> I can't type. <laughs> first quarter, Q T R, right? First quarter, um, and then press enter. And if nothing changes, right? Your active cell doesn't move. Um, this doesn't come up and show you something else. Then what you did um, worked. And what that means is that this group of cells now has a name, first quarter. This group, well, that's still just a range of cells. This is just a range of cells. But this one has a name. I've also named this one. Okay, this one's called income. And, and what I can do with that is if I'm on another worksheet, say I'm on worksheet four doing something, and I need to use those numbers, or I just need to go back and reference those numbers, um, and I don't, I don't remember where they are, right? Maybe um, if I don't remember exactly where they are cell reference-wise, you know, was it sheet one in, in B10, 11, and 12, or, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, all I have to do is type in first QTR, which was the name, press Enter, I must have spelled something wrong. F I R S T Q T R. There we go. First quarter, and it takes me back to that range of cells. Uh, same thing with the income. If I'm over here and I want to go back and look at that group of cells in income, I just type income, press enter, and there it goes. Um, in the same notion, if I'm over here on sheet four and I want to do some sort of calculation. Maybe I want to do uh, average, average, and then I move into the argument area and I can just put first QTR, first quarter, close that out, and that gives me the average of that group of cells. So that's one of the things uh, that you can do with, with the name range. And we'll, we'll look at that again in future classes. Uh, I just wanted to go ahead and give you that. We'll and we, I think it's in the intermediate class. We'll go in and look at how to modify, change the names, delete, whatever the case may be um, for these name, named ranges. Let's take a quick look at navigating around the worksheet. You've seen me do lots of pointing and clicking. Uh, I would guess most of you know that you can move around with pointing and clicking. 
You can also move around with the arrow keys, all right? Up, down, left, right, whatever you need. You can also maneuver with the shift key and the tab key and the shift and enter key. The tab key will move your active cell to the right one column at a time. Shift tab will move your active cell to the left one column at a time. The enter key will move your active cell down one row at a time. Shift enter will move your active cell up one row at a time. So tab left shift, or I'm sorry, tab right, shift tab left, enter down, shift enter up. Okay, that's how you can move around. And that's going to come in handy later on when we do some other, some other fun stuff here in Excel. All right, now we're going to move on to the, the, the different types of information you can enter into an Excel worksheet. And by that I mean there are three types of information or three types of data that you can enter into an Excel worksheet. You can enter values, which these are all values. All right, numbers are values. You can add labels. So if I put income here, that's a label. Essentially, words are labels. And you can also add formulas and functions. So a formula would be uh, equals sum. And then I'll select these three. Close my arguments. And there's my, there's my formula. So these are the three different types of data you can enter. Values, labels, and formulas and functions. Formulas and functions are one, one category, okay? So with that in mind, um, it's a good idea to plan out your worksheet before um, you get started. Now granted, it's easy enough to make changes to this. Um, this way you don't spend a lot of time figuring out what all your labels are and that kind of stuff. So let's look at formatting. Um, we're going to do a budget sheet, so I'm just going to come up here and I'll put um, first quarter, first quarter budget. All right. So since we're doing a budget, we're talking about money. So we want to change these basic numbers into what look like money. Now I could come in here and 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 put a dollar sign in every one of those and. And make it look like money but you know that would really take a lot of time so instead of doing that it would be way quicker to just select all of these and change them all from general numbers to currency Ooh. but I don't want to do it that way because I don't want to format these six cells as currency because, well, maybe I'm not going to put currency in there. Maybe I'm going to add some additional labels in there and I don't want to have to go around and, and change the, the, you know, the, the formatting. Or maybe I just want numbers in there and not currency values. So again, I don't want to have to go in and change the formatting every time I want to make a change. So what we need to do we could select this group of cells, make it currency, and then select this group of cells and make it currency. But it will be quicker just to do them all at the same time. So that brings up um, non-adjacent cell selection. Adjacent cell selection simply means you're selecting cells that are beside each other. Okay, I select this one and then this one. They're beside each other. And then I select these two. Those two are beside the other two. Select these two and they're beside the other set or the other four, so on and so forth. So these are all adjacent cells. Now to select these cells at the same time, you simply hold, put your magic finger on the control key and then you click and drag to select this group of cells. Now you have selected cells that are non-adjacent to each other. Now I come up here, click the drop down 
and make them all currency at the same time. All right. Uh, we can we can get rid of the decimal points using this decrease decimal. If you ever come across a situation where um, your your cell displays um, hashtags or pound signs, let me see if I can duplicate that here. I'll do it with this one. It's got bigger numbers. There. All this means is that my number is too big. My value is too big to be displayed in that cell. So if that's the case, then you simply resize that column um, so that it can accommodate the larger numbers. So there's three different ways that you can, actually four different ways, but that, that you can adjust the cell or column width. Um, you saw me click and drag here on this column heading divider, right? Not down here, because this is going to select cells. Can't do it down here. Has to be up here on the column heading. You put your mouse pointer on that divider between the two columns. You click and drag to the left or to the right. And you'll see it shows you the width, right? That's 8.57. That's 8.57 characters. All right? So if I take this back to um, let's take it back to five characters, right? Five, even 5.5, 5.3. That's when we start running into problems because this, the, the value in this cell is six characters, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's six characters. So I have to make this at least six characters wide so that it fits. So that's one way. You click and drag. You click and drag the right side of the column you want to change. So if I want to change column D, I put my mouse pointer between D and E, and that's where I make my change. Easy stuff. Second way to make a change to the column width is to put your mouse pointer on the column heading. So if I want to change column E, I put my pointer on the E, and you'll see the mouse pointer change. And you right click and then you select column width. So here again, your column width right now, it's set at 10.57 characters wide. If I want to make it to where it's just going to accommodate my bigger number, which is the 2,575, I know that's six characters. I can go 6.25 just to give it a little extra space and then click OK. So there's all six characters are visible. It might have been too small if I would have gone with just six. Yeah, see, six is too small. Uh, and the reason six is too small is because it, it uses a, a unified character width, um, what they call mono spacing, and these characters aren't mono spaced. Um, so it's best to go, if you're going to do it that way, to go just a little bigger than what you need. So the third way, and what I consider the, the most efficient, is to simply put your mouse pointer on the right hand column heading border that you want to change and double click. And that will automatically size that column to fit the largest um, cell occupant, I guess would be a good way to put that, because they're not always going to be values um, some of them might be formulas or, or um, labels. So I'll just go through and double click and double click. Now, when I double clicked on this one, it, it resized to accommodate the largest um, object or the largest cell content. So we're not just talking about these numbers. I added first quarter budget in column C1. So it's going to resize to accommodate that. So this one we're going to have to do a bit, we'll do it manually, right? We'll go right click, column width, 6.2, there we go. That's how we, that's how we change them. So if you wanted to resize a group of columns, like if you want all four of these columns to be the same width, but you want them bigger or smaller than what they are now, then you select the columns by putting your mouse pointer in a column heading, 
click and drag to select the columns that you want. And then right click and select column width. And let's say I wanted to make these smaller, I can make them 5.25. That makes them all smaller, or maybe I want them all bigger. And I can make them 12. And there they're all bigger. So that's that's column column width. Um, the easy way, all right? The easy way. So I think we're going to call this this section done. Um, one final note: uh, I want you to be careful of your mouse pointer as you're working in Excel, because in this very small space right here, I get one, two, three, four different mouse pointers just in this small space. So you need to be careful and know what each mouse pointer does. You know the big fat white plus sign is used for selecting cells. We know that if you're on the edge of a cell and you get the, the crossed arrows with the pointer, you know that's going to move cell content. And then we also have on the bottom right hand corner what's known as the fill handle. That's the small plus sign. That's used to copy cell content. Right? So they all do something different. Um, if you're not sure what's going to happen, do it. Right? Make it happen. You say, oh, darn, I didn't want that to happen. We have undo. Right? You can use the undo button up here. Or if you accidentally do something you weren't supposed to, control Z is the keyboard shortcut for undo. Uh, if you decide, wait, I wanted to do that, then you can use control Y is redo. Control Z, undo, control Y, redo. All right, some more, some more helpful tips for you. All right, so with that, I'm gonna say thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.